Oh, I didn't see you there. Welcome to Cube's Game Shelf. This is a review of the GeForce 2 and GeForce 3 Ti series. These are graphics cards that I had back in the day. Well, not the GeForce 2 Ti, but I had the GTS. So let's look at the history and then we'll go into some benchmarks. Cube's Game Shelf. In the fall of 2001, Nvidia refreshed its graphics card lineup with the GeForce 2 Ti and 3 Ti series. The GeForce 2 Ti was a die shrink of the GeForce 2 series that came out a year earlier. It retained the same core clock speed as the high-end GeForce 2 Ultra, but had a lower memory clock speed. It's the second fastest card in the GeForce 2 series. In this video, we'll be looking at the GeForce 2 Ti 200. It's worth mentioning that Gainward released a card called the GeForce 2 Ti 450. This used a faster memory that was found on the high-end GeForce 2 Ultra. The first GeForce 3 card came out in early 2001, and its big new feature was a programmable pixel shader. There were few games that used pixel shading at the time, and it wasn't a requirement in games until years later. I remember when I upgraded to a GeForce 3 from a GeForce 2 and played the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. The difference was amazing. Nvidia's definition of a pixel shader is a graphics function that calculates effects on a per pixel basis. So you can have all these different pixels that can be rendered, lit, shaded, and colored for each frame, making the graphics look a lot more realistic. There was a primitive version of the pixel shader launched with the GeForce 2 GTS called the NVIDIA Shading Rasterizer, but it was used in very few games. Also launched in this lineup was the GeForce 3 Ti 200, which was slower than the GeForce 3, and the GeForce 3 Ti 500, which was faster. NVIDIA's competition at the time was from the ATI Radeon 8500. Based on the specs, it was expected to be faster than the GeForce 3 Ti 500. The results were disappointing. It turned out to be as fast as the GeForce 3, depending on the game, and sometimes about as fast as the GeForce 3 Ti 200. I would have loved to compare a Radeon 8500 in this video, but unfortunately I don't have one yet. Maybe I can do that in a future video. And here are the cards we're looking at. This is the GeForce 2 Ti. This is an Asus V7700 Ti. 64 megabyte. And this is a EVGA GeForce 3 Ti 500. This is the original box here. And I was stoked to get this because when I bought a GeForce 3 Ti 500, it was later in 2002. And I got it for cheap on the site pricewatch.com, so I didn't even have the box. And that was because I, in 2002, I was 17 years old. I was a high school student without a job, so I didn't have a lot of money. So super stoked to get this in the box. The EVGA CD came with a demo of the game Heavy Gear 2 and Battlezone 2. So that's kind of cool. So now let's look at some benchmarks. The Retro Graphics Card Battle. I ran Quake 3 Arena's Time Demo 1 benchmark. There wasn't a huge difference at lower resolutions, but at higher resolutions, there was a huge difference. At 1600 by 1200, the GeForce 3 is almost twice as fast as the GeForce 2. This game was two years old at the time, but was still used as a popular benchmark. Let's look at some newer games. Comanche 4, released in 2001, might be the first game to use a pixel shader. There's a section of the NVIDIA website where the developers are talking about it. Comanche 4 is more representative of your total overall system, so your CPU, your RAM, and your GPU, rather than some games, which would be just your GPU. This is a pretty demanding game, and even high-end computers at the time would only get about 30 frames per second. You really need a PC from like 2003 or 2004 to get 60 frames per second. I used the program Fraps to do a 60 second benchmark and flew through the same area, so I'll show the average frame rates. The GeForce 2 failed to maintain 30 frames per second and was a little bit more playable on the GeForce 3 Ti 500. I would still rather play this game on a faster PC though. Aquinox is a 2001 game that was originally designed as a tech demo for the GeForce 3. I had some problems running it on Windows XP, the single player kept crashing, so here I'm just doing a dogfight. Let's look at the average frame rate. So this is no surprise on a game that was designed for the GeForce 3. It has DirectX 8 graphics, 
So it's going to run a lot more smoothly on the GeForce 3, and it was a lot more playable. Evolva is a third-person action game released in 2000 that was commonly used to test the GeForce 2 series. There's also a patch to add bump mapping, but I think it looks better without it. The bump mapping will also take a hit on performance. Even though I own the retail version of this game, I, I chose to test the demo because it has a built-in benchmark, but I couldn't get it working. So I just did it my same method as before by using Fraps to do a 60 second benchmark. I'm not really sure why there's only a 3 FPS difference, but this is a DirectX 7 game using technology only in the GeForce 2. 3D Mark 2001 is a benchmark program with some cool scenes. It also has a pixel shader test, bump map test, and fill rate test. This scene is using the same engine as the 2001 game Max Payne but the performance in the benchmark scene is higher than what you'll typically find in the game. It's easy to tell they are inspired by the Matrix. The pixel shading test still looks incredible, and this is 16 years old. Of course, this test can't be run on the GeForce 2. Here are the results, and we're looking at a score of almost 5,700 on the GeForce 3 and 4,000 on the GeForce 2. That's it for my benchmarks for now. Let's look at some cool NVIDIA demos. This demo is called Grove and was designed specifically for the GeForce 2 Ti. You can manipulate this tree to have different depth, balance, twist. It's kind of neat. Chameleon is a demo designed for the GeForce 3 Ti series. You can change a couple options like move around by light source and change to wireframe. There was also a benchmark version of Chameleon called Chameleon Mark, which seemed to run a bit faster than the Chameleon demo. Chameleon runs at about 30 frames per second, while Chameleon Mark runs at 60. Even though the GeForce 2 Ti wasn't as future-proof as the GeForce 3, because it didn't have a pixel shader, it was still a good card back then. There weren't many games that required a pixel shader until years later. My first NVIDIA graphics card was the LeadTech WinFast GeForce 2 GTS 64MB. It's kind of hard to find this card today, especially the 64 megabyte version, so it was cool to get the GeForce 2 Ti in my collection. And it was also cool to get the GeForce 3 Ti 500 back in my collection. My first two NVIDIA graphics cards. I'd like to do a part 2 of this with more benchmarks, maybe comparing the Radeon 8500. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on Coop's Game Shelf.